welcome to Easy Limu Learning Simplified. My name is Eric. I'll be taking you through this topic, rate, ratio, proportion, and percentages. And for this lesson, we're going to look at proportions. So we want to start by looking at what uh, it means when you talk about proportions. And then after that, we'll see a few questions involving proportions. And of course, at the end of the lesson, we'll give you some assignment to help you practice and just to gauge on your understanding of the concept as discussed through this lesson. So what does it mean when you talk about proportion? So uh, what we call a proportion is uh, more or less the same as uh, what, we, what we call when we talk about when we were talking about fractions, it's more or less the same as what you were calling equal fractions. You know, when we talk about ratio, it's just uh, the same as fractions, only, only that they are, they are used differently in mathematics or they are used to achieve different objectives in mathematics, but they are more or less the same thing. So when you talk about proportions, we are simply talking about equal fractions that we, we mentioned when we were talking about fractions uh, in our previous videos. So we want to see examples of, uh, of proportions and possibly some of the questions involving proportions. So for example, we say if A, B, and C are, are, are given such that A is to B is to C equals to 2 to 3 to 5, then A, B, and C are said to be proportional to the given numbers there. So we have 2, 3, 5. So proportional to 2, 3, and 5. And uh, in mathematics, this relationship can be interpreted to mean that when we take A, we divide by, so we have A here, the first one here, we divide by the first one on the other side should be equal to b which is the second one divided by the second one on the other side that is the number and uh, c here divided by the last one there so we say a over 2 equals to b over 3 and is equals to c over 5 and and, and this relationship can be used to to solve very many problems in mathematics as we're going to see as we continue remember after this uh, one of our uh, videos is going to be on the applications of the same so apart from expressing them this way, remember last time we talked about fractions as just another form of expressing ratios. For example, if you have the ratio a to b, I mean we have this fraction a over a over a over two, we can also express it as a is to b is equals to two to three. You see, you can see a is here and b is there. So we are talking about a is to b is equals to two is to three. The same applies to this other one, B and C. So B is to C is equals to 3 is to 5, C. And you, the same thing as saying that A here to C is equals to 2 to 5. You see, the first one here to the last one here. So we call them proportions if they there, there is a, maybe some corresponding characteristics. For example, if you're talking about number of boys to girls you see number of boys to the number of girls maybe could be equal to three is to is to five for example something like that so this one here would be representing the number of boys in some other context maybe you you walk into two different rooms maybe two different classrooms maybe this could be a school you know so we say that this ratio this these two ratios here can only be said to be in proportion if we are talking about the number of boys here to girls, and at the same time, this other one is representing the number of boys to girls. Now, if you interchange so that we are talking about G is to B, then it ceases to be a proportion. You see. So it's only a proportion if there is corresponding characteristics. That's when we talk of a proportion. So, for example, this could be represent the number of desks to chairs. So this must also be desks to, to chairs. And we're going to see how that is applicable in solving certain problems in in mathematics so take note of the two ways of expressing the uh, what you are calling proportion we want to see how that can be used to solve certain problems maybe later on as you continue with with this concept of proportion so let's see this example number two we have the ratio of a to b equals to three is to four and uh, b to c equals to five is to seven find the ratio of a is to C. So how do you do it? You see, we have A to B is equals to 3 is to 4. 
And then now we have b is to c should be equal to 5 is to, is to 7. So if you look at this, you see here the value b here and the value b here, they are different. Here the value b is, remember, a is proportional to 3 here and b proportional to 4. But now look at this other b, which is also b, has a different value here. It's proportional to a different value. So for us to solve this problem, what we're going to do, we're going to make these two values the same. So basically, you need to try and find a number that if maybe multiplied or divided will be able to give us a number here. So what can we use here? Maybe we can use the LCM, which could be 20. So what you're going to do is you're going to multiply this one here by 5, and you're going to multiply this other line here by by 4 so that you have 3 is to 20 and then we have 20 to 28 so you can see the value of b here is the same so then from there you are able to conclude that actually this one here is supposed to be 15 remember you have to multiply both of them by the factor there so this is 15 is to 20 and then 20 is to 28 so from there you are able to conclude that a to b to c is equals to 15 to 20 so a to b to c equals to 15 to 20 to 28 see here yeah. so again you can now see that this is a proportion which then means that a over 15 remember a here is the first one over the first one on the other side should be equal to b over 20 which should be equal to C over 28. C. So then that means that A to B is equal to 15 is to 20. B to C is 20 is to 28. And A to C is 15 to 28. So the first one to the last one is equal to first one to the last one. Yes, we have a certain values corresponding there. So what is the ratio of A is to C? That is the question that you are asked here. So you can see A is to C is 15 to 28. So that is how you solve that problem. So we have another example here, uh, example number three. So we are also given that given that a is to b is 2 to 5 and b to c is 5 to 3, find the ratio a to c. So we'll do the same thing that we did in the previous question. So we have a to b is equals to 2 is to 5 and b to c equals to 5 to 3. So this is easy because you can see now B here, the, 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 the numbers corresponding to the middle letter here, B, you know, is the same. So 5, 5. So in this case, there is nothing that we'll do. So it's simply a matter of rearranging them. So you have A to B to C equals to 2 to 5 to 3, which means then A over 2 is equals to B over 5 which is equals to c over over 3 you see so these ratios are in proportion they are simply the same so then we can then answer the question that is asked a to c so you can see a is the first one and c is the last one so we have the ratio a to c equals to 2 is to to 3 so then we have the ratio of a to c as 2 to 3 so again, we have our next example here, example number four. So we are given uh, the ratio A to B equals to, so these ones are many, so I have to give some sufficient space here, at least to give me more space to work out this one here. Oh, so A to B is seven is to one. And then we have B to C is, uh, oh, this one is B is to D. So this one here is D. So B to D is 1 to 2. And again, finally, D to C is equals to 2 to 3. So here again, you see here we have D, both of them, D, D. So it means these two values here again must be the same. Again, B, B. So those, those two values here must be the same. So in this case, there is nothing that we'll do. We'll simply express the ratio A to B to, to D to C. So we have a is to B is to D is to C equals to the first one is 7, the second one is 1, that one is 2, and the last one is 3. And 
we are done. So again, because this is a proportion, it then means, we said this is interpreted to mean that A, which is the first one on this side, should be uh, divided by the first one on the other side. So 7 should be equal to the second one, B, divided by the second one on the other side, 1. Uh -huh. This is equals to C, actually D here. This is the third one on this side, divided by the third one on the other side, which is 2, and should be equal to the last one, which is C, divided by the last one on the other side, which is 3. So we're going to see how this kind of interpretation can be used to solve problems in mathematics later on as we continue. So we have our fi final example here, example number 5. Again, we have A to C is 1 is to 2. We have, I mean, that is, this is supposed to be B. So A to B is 1 is to 2. We have got B to to D again is 4 is to 5. So 4, 5 here. Yeah. And then finally we have D. C is 3 is to 1. So now, look at this now. B, the, the values of B here are different. So we have to make them the same. So what, what will we do? What will we do here? So these two, they have to be the same. And this one also must be, must be the same. So that is a bit tricky. So what will we do? We'll try and multiply this by, by let's say, 4. See, I'm trying to find a value that will be able to make this one here. So we, will, we'll, uh, we will multiply this one here by 5, and then we multiply this one here by, by 3. So... What you're going to get here is, remember, you have to multiply both of them. So this will be 12 is to 15. And this other one is going to be, again, 15 is to, is to 5. But again, remember now, this 4 here has changed to 12. So this 4 here is representing the B here is proportional to 4. So again, B there is proportional to 2. So we have to change this 2 to 12. So what will we do to this one here to make it 12 again so that it's the same as this other value here? So maybe you multiply this by 6. So the rule is that as you multiply this by 6, you have to multiply both of them. So then that is going to give us 6 is to 12. So then you should be able to express the ratio A is to B is to D is to C. So this is supposed to be the first one there is 6. The second one is 12. And then B D here is represented by 15. And then the last one there is 5. So this has an interpretation that A, which is the first one on this other side, divided by 6, which is the first one on the other side, should be equal to B divided by 12, should be equal to uh, D here divided by 15, and this should be equal to C divided by 5. C divided by 12. So we are going to see how this kind of interpretation can be used to solve certain problems in, in mathematics. So we have a few questions here to help you practice on the same thing that you have learned and uh, also just to gauge on your understanding of the concept as has been discussed through, through this lesson. Otherwise, that marks the end of the lesson. Until next time, goodbye.